It's a little bit after 8 a.m. and this is my Echo Flow River Pro portable power station. It is at 0%. I've been using it inside as a portable outlet. I just hooked it up to some solar panels. I'm using these Echo Flow portable solar panels. These are 160 watts. And let's see what kind of charge we could put on this power station and how much we can cook with it today. Counter cooking. No kitchen, no problem. Right now, the solar panels are bringing in 68 watts of input. It's been about a half hour. We're now pulling in 87 watts and we are at 6% charged. So I just took out a portable table. This is like a lightweight portable camping table. And I put it here and I put the Echo Flow on top of the table and I could set this up as like my solar kitchen for the day. An issue that I'm having right now is that the solar panels are only bringing in like 30 watts right now. There's some clouds in front of the sun and the cloudier it gets, the lower the input on the echo flow. So we'll see what happens. I really can't even plug in a cooking appliance right now when the input is that low and there's so little charge on this device. It has been one hour. We're now pulling 108 watts of input and we are at 15% of the capacity of the unit. It is 9.54 a.m. and we're at 24% on the Echo Flow and the solar panels are pulling in 109 watts. I need to tilt them a little bit because the sun has definitely moved in the sky. And I'm here with my Dash mini rice cooker and inside of it I have five eggs and maybe like an inch of water and I am going to be hard boiling these eggs so first thing I'm going to do is plug it in. So I just plugged it in and I set it to cook and it is pulling 193 watts and solar panels are pulling in about 83 right now. Well. I'm casting a shadow on them. So once I move them, they'll probably pull in a little bit more than 100. So let's see if we could hard boil these eggs. I just moved the solar panels over here. Okay, now we're over 100, we're at 105. And we've gone down to 23%. If we could keep it in the low 100s, then we should be able to cook these eggs. It is about 15 minutes later and the, the water in the dash mini rice cooker is boiling which is good because that's what we want and those eggs should be done in about 12 minutes so I'm just gonna keep an eye on a timer um, right now we are at 17% charge in the echo flow and we're pulling in just about 100 watts we're still using 193 watts it is now about 12 minutes later we're down to 12% on the echo flow and these eggs should be done. They're still steaming away. That should be plenty of time to make hard boiled eggs. So I am going to unplug the Dash mini rice cooker and I'm gonna grab the pot with these pot tongs so I could bring it inside, take the eggs out and I'm really hungry. I'd like to see if I can make some oatmeal. So I emptied the hard boiled eggs and the water and I added a half a cup of rolled oats, one cup of water, and then I had a package of freeze-dried strawberries and bananas. So I added the freeze-dried fruit. I'm gonna put the cover on this and let's see if we can cook this. I wouldn't think it would take very long. Right now we are at 13% and we're pulling 113 watts of power from the solar panels. So it's been about eight minutes and I just wanted to give this a stir and see what's going on in here. So it looks like it is almost done. It's cooking nicely. Could cook a little bit more, so I'm gonna leave it in here for, I don't know, another three to five minutes. I don't know if you could see this, but we're down to 10% on the echo flow, and we're still pulling in about 100 watts. It's been another three or four minutes, and I'm gonna say this is done, so I'm gonna unplug it and bring it inside. We are at 8% on the echo flow, and we're pulling in almost 120 watts right now. So here's my breakfast and I'm having a hard boiled egg and some oatmeal that was made with rolled oats and some freeze dried strawberries and freeze dried bananas. And I sprinkled some honey on top of it, added just a pinch of salt. And yeah, this looks like it's going to be a good hearty breakfast. 
I've already had a glass of apple cider, so I had some juice this morning, and this is what I'll be eating. The oatmeal is so good with the freeze-dried fruit, better than any instant oatmeal you can buy. And it's so easy to make yourself. It is 11.07 a.m. We're back up to 14% on the Echo Flow. And I have my little immersion heater here with a mug of water. And I know a lot of people like to have coffee or tea with their breakfast, so I figured let's boil some water and make a cup of tea. It should only take a minute or two to do that. This one works really fast. It's pulling a little bit over 300 watts, and the solar panel is at about 120. When using one of these immersion heaters, never turn it on or plug it in unless it is immersed in water because you can burn out the element inside of it and never remove it from the water before you unplug it. It's been four minutes now and you could see that the water near the immersion heater is really boiling. You could actually see the water flow. I don't know how much the camera is picking up, but from here up, you can see a lot of movement from the hot water and the glass is really, really hot. Below, down here, the glass is not as hot down here and there's not a whole lot of water movement down here also. So definitely from like here up, so if this was a smaller mug, it would be you know, completely hot right now. On this one, the bottom is still quite cool. But it's been five minutes, so I'm gonna take this inside, stir it up, and make a cup of tea. And that brought the Echo Flow back down to 10%. But the solar panels are pulling about 130 watts, or at least they were. And here's my cup of tea. It has brewed very nicely. I had it brewing for about four or five minutes and I added some honey to it. And the water is nice and hot, perfect drinking temperature. It is 12 p.m. It's been kind of cloudy, so let's see where we're at power wise. We are only at 16% and it says the solar panels are bringing in two watts. It's like nothing. So hopefully the sun will come back out. This is the kind of sky that we're dealing with today. So it's clouds and then some clear sky and then some clouds. It's 1.30 p.m. and about a half hour ago, maybe an hour ago, I put the solar panels flat on the patio because the sun is pretty much directly overhead right now. And we're up to 31% as far as the echo flow and the input is a little bit low on the solar panels but it's kind of cloudy and the sun's going in and out so now we're back up to 122 watts it's about 1 45 p.m and this is what i'm having for lunch today so there's no cooking involved i'm having a salad because i want to clean out some of the fresh produce that i have in my refrigerator and i have some cucumber and tomato and onion and green bell pepper and also some black beans that I've added to that and I've dressed it with some lemon juice, olive oil, salt, pepper, garlic powder and oregano and I'm having a small slice of homemade einkorn wheat bread. It is 4.40 p.m. and it's been cloudy for the past few hours, but we are up to 47% on the echo flow. I'm gonna let it continue to charge. It's only pulling in 14 watts right now from the solar panel. And this is what the sky looks like. It's gotten a lot cloudier. It is 5.30 p.m. and I am going to get dinner started. So I'm using my vintage mess kit and I'll be putting this in my Sabbath heat mini oven. And I'm using up ingredients that are in my refrigerator. So from left to right, I have some sauteed escarole, which is a leafy green. In the middle, I have some more of the black beans that I used in my salad for lunch. And on the right, I have some cooked pasta. I'm not putting anything on the ingredients just yet. If I had some butter, I'd put some butter in here to melt, but I don't have any butter in the house right now. So I'm gonna put this in the Sabbath heat, hook it up to the solar generator, and probably cook it for at least a half hour. I want everything to get nice and hot. Once it's nice and hot, then I'll put some seasoning on it, and I'll probably use some 
garlic powder, maybe some Italian seasoning, some olive oil, and then this is what I'll be eating for dinner. I just put the top on the mess kit, and now this is going in the Sabbath heat. Here's the Sabbath heat. I just put it on high. It is drawing 108 watts on high, and the solar panels are only bringing in 11 watts right now. We're at 47% on the echo flow, so I'll be back in about a half hour. Okay, it's been just about a half hour, and I'm going to take the Sabbath heat inside and open it up. Let's take a look at what kind of power we have left. We're down to 36% on the echo flow. And there's an ant walking around on the table. I just opened the mess kit and everything in here is piping hot. So everything cooked really nicely. I just added some olive oil, some garlic powder, some salt and pepper and Italian seasoning. And I topped it with a little bit of grated Romano cheese. Let's just taste some of it like a piece of pasta. Oh, look at this. I got a little bit of everything here. So I have a little bit of escarole, beans and pasta. It's crazy hot. I definitely need to let this cool down a little bit before I eat it, but it cooked really nicely out there. I probably could have only heated it up for, I don't know, maybe like 15, 20 minutes instead of like a full half hour. It's almost 7 p.m. I brought the Echo Flow inside. We're at 36% charge. It was not really getting any input from the solar panels, so it's done charging for the day. And right now, I want to make something sweet to end my day with. So I think I'm going to make some kind of almond butter brownie. I'm not using a recipe, so I'm just trying to improvise. I just cracked an egg into this measuring cup. I'm adding about a tablespoon of almond butter, and I'm kind of at the bottom of my jar of almond butter. And it's not very um, smooth and flowing. I guess I did not do a really good job of mixing up um, all of the oil that's in the almond butter. So I'm just going to try to mix it up as good as I can right now with the egg. I'm going to add some honey. I don't know, maybe that was like a tablespoon. A little bit of vanilla extract. I'm not measuring anything. And then I'm going to add like a teaspoon of unsweetened cocoa powder and mix this all together. I switched over to a fork to try to break up those almond butter lumps. And I think it looks pretty good right now. It smells really good. We'll see how it bakes up. I'm using my Dash Egg Bite Maker and the blue light is on. And once the blue light goes off, we're ready to start cooking. And yes, I did lose that little plastic piece that protects the LED light. The fan noise you hear is the echo flow. And right now the Dash Egg Bite Maker is using 407 watts. We're at 35% on the echo flow. And this should only take a few minutes to cook. So we should have enough power. All right, the blue light just went off and the fan of the echo flow went off also. Batter's a little lumpy, but that's okay. All right, there's my batter in the egg bite maker. Let's shut this and then I'll check on this in about eight minutes. It's still pulling zero watts off of the echo flow. It's been about seven minutes now, so let's open this up and look at what's going on inside. That looks like it's done. So I am going to unplug it. We're down to 29% on the echo flow. So this Dash Egg Bite Maker uses power to bring itself up to temperature. Once it gets up to temperature, it actually stops using power and it cycles off for, I don't know, maybe like a minute and then it cycles back on and then it cycles off. So it cycles off and on. So uh, it's pretty energy efficient that way. And I think we started with 34% power and we're down to 29%. That's not too bad. So this is what I just made. It's really, really hot. And I don't know if you could see it, but it's definitely kind of flat. Um, probably more like a pancake than a brownie. But for something that I just threw together, I'm going to be happy no matter what it is. I just have like a sweet tooth craving right now that I want something for. So I'm going to put this aside, let it cool off. Okay, now let's check out this concoction here. I'm just going to 
cut it in half. It's not as dark as a brownie, but that's okay. Let's try it. So this is totally hitting the spot. It actually tastes like a peanut butter brownie, which is so weird because I definitely used almond butter and not peanut butter. But if someone gave this to me and they, they said what's in it, I would totally think it was peanut butter. And it's not as moist as a brownie. It's kind of like a very dense cake, but it's very tasty. And this is a very nice way for me to end my day. I wish I had some whipped cream because a little bit of whipped cream would be really, really good on here. Or maybe some vanilla ice cream. That would be really good on here. I don't have any of that. Like I said, I'm kind of trying to empty out my refrigerator. So I just remembered that I had some strawberries in the refrigerator and also some coconut milk. So I crumbled up the almond butter brownie and I added some cut up strawberries and some coconut milk. Coconut milk has some solids in it. Um, it's been in the refrigerator and this looks really good. It's almost like a trifle if you've ever had one of those desserts before. Now let me taste it with some strawberry and coconut milk. Very, very good. I love the combination with the fresh fruit. And that is an entire day of solar cooking. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more full days of solar cooking. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.